following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. They are two of the NFL's most sparkling names. Impact players who can light up the night. But their teams are in trouble. The Vikings and the Eagles have each won only one game. Herschel Walker came to Minnesota a year ago in what was thought to be the blockbuster trade that would take the Vikings back to the Super Bowl. And if they are to salvage this desperate season, Herschel must make a move. My personal responsibility is whenever I get a chance to try to make something big happen. You know, it's, it's tough. I'm touching the ball, I think, about three times a quarter, which is very tough to, uh, you know, to do a lot of things and to run it back. But I think, uh, you know, out of the three times, i got to make something big happen. Randall Cunningham is the stylish and talented quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. His athletic ability is as good as any player in this game, yet his team is 1-3. and three. Cunningham is a leader who can carry a team, and tonight, he's the man who can turn around Philadelphia's season. Well, Randall Cunningham has to go out and do his job. You know, my leadership qualities are not going out and talking, saying let's get it going. It's basically me doing my job. As long as I can do my job, the other guys will see, well, Randall's doing his part. we got to do our part. The Minnesota Vikings beat the Philadelphia Eagles on ABC's Monday Night Football. Season on a ABC. Yes, everybody is a fan. This is the biggest party, man. All the riders right across this land. We all got it started. Yeah. Everything is ready. Everything is right. Monday night football is coming on tonight. <laughs> Protection breaks down, down he goes, it's a fumble, it's picked up by the Vikings, loose again, the official dives into the pile and the Eagles have the football. Back to back mistakes by Tim Irwin, the right tackle, first of all he's the guy that gets run back into the quarterback by Reggie White, and then Irwin somewhat atones for his mistake by picking up the football, but then wouldn't you know it, he goes ahead and fumbles it. Four wide receivers. But a new look for them. Although one of them is Keith Byers and one of them is Keith Jackson. First down from the 22 and Cunningham, a great scrambler, <laughs> takes something out of nothing and turns what would have been a sack into about a seven yard pickup. The Eagles this year have bogged down off it inside the 20 and it's shoveled back by Byers and there's another busted play as Byers Put it on the ground. Anthony Tony is able to recover, and once again the Eagles bogged down in what they call the red zone. Hey, that's a little razzle dazzle early. 38-yard field goal attempt for Ruzek, and the kick is good. So the Eagles get a big break, but then can't get a first down. Settle for three on Ruzek's field goal, which comes two minutes and 48 seconds into the game in Philadelphia. Eagles take the early lead. And Walker awaits this one at the four. And he cannot escape the grasp of Al Harris, the longtime Chicago Bear and now Philadelphia Eagle linebacker playing here on special teams in his 11th season. Could have considered Frank leaving his feet to try to make that catch. Harry Newsom gets the kick away. Marvin Hargrove, the rookie from Richmond. From the 33 back to the 42. And that's where Cunningham and the Eagles take over with 10.56 to go in the opening quarter in Philly. 3-0 Eagles. From the 47-yard line, and the Vikings jumped. It was Goldman across the line, and the pass is incomplete, and there's a flag down on that as well. Intended for Calvin Williams, 
Carl Lee with the coverage. So a flag at the line of scrimmage and a flag at the end of the play. So why not go for the big strike? You can see Dolman all the way across the ball. That's so obvious for Cunningham. Now look here, Files, against the defense. Scrimmage with you. We got defensive pass interference on number 39. Come we accept it first down. I mean, you have to give Randall Cunningham, I think, a great deal of credit there for realizing that he had a free play. And, Frank, that's a tight call on oh, Carl boy, Lee. I'll tell you, that's, that's Pro Bowl coverage by Carl Lee. He, Plus the extra day because of Monday night to think about it. Half a month. 15 days. Third and nine. Cunningham with a lot of room to run. Has the first down and slides down at the eight-yard line. Minnesota, we talked about it earlier in a man-for-man -man defense. It was Randall Cunningham looking downfield, chased out of the pocket. Carl Lee, the cornerback, was playing the man, looking at the man. Nice. Cunningham throws to the outside, a flag is down as Kenny Jackson makes the catch, he's out of bounds at the one, and we've got a flag down at the 15-yard line. Against the Eagles. Well, after the ball was already in the air. Third and goal, Cunningham walking in, and the catch is made, touchdown! Williams was in! Told you Randall can throw this as anyone as good as anyone in the game. Vikings argue next stop here, folks, will be the replay booth. Well, I guarantee you. I... It's Carly again. There's the right. The left is out of bounds. You have to come down with both feet in the NFL, even mm -hmm. if it's in the end zone. I do not believe. Mark Burns is the replay official. Just an excellent catch by Calvin Williams. Well, you can see the right foot is down, but watch the left. It is well out of bounds. And again, relatively good coverage by Carl Lee. As a review by the replay official, the score counts. Touchdown. You got me on that? And he what? obviously did not have both feet in bounds. For the extra point, a fumble snap and a block kick and a horrible call by the replay booth. Eagles was the holder. Ruzak's extra point attempt was blocked, but the Eagles get a big break. Nine to nothing. Philadelphia will take a, a commercial here and we'll come back and obviously look at that again. From the 37-yard line. And there's the first completion from Gannon tonight to Steve Jordan. And there might be a face mask yeah. on that. And in fact, here comes the flag. So designating. It's in the way we'd like to see it possible. No. First and 15. Whoa, oh, wide open. open. Carter. Cannon going deep. Touchdown. Oh, and how Rich good. Carter. How good must he feel? Oh. How good must this ex-Eagle Chris Carter feel? You notice he's not returning the ball. Stadium. It's a good fake by Walker in the sense that he had the football. And Izell Dickens buys the run. And oh, how good must Chris Carter be. 9-7, Philadelphia. Tony can barely get on track. Picks up about a yard. On the sidelines there, now he works with the quarterbacks in Minnesota. Third and seven, Cunningham is one for six. He's Look one out. for seven with an interception now. Mike Merriweather, the former Steeler. And he's out of bounds, they say, at the eight-yard line. They're bringing it back to the eight. Yeah, you could hear the whistle. You could hear the whistle blowing while Merriweather was still running. He had a hit by two. First and goal. Gannon patted down. Reggie White was there, number 92. Pollard. Barna. Second and goal. Herschel Walker's first carry of the night is a fumble. Picked up by the Eagles. Jerome Brown. <laughs> oh, the I would have loved to tackle. Would have loved to the 19-yard line. Would you love to see Jerome break into the clear? Well, we've got an injured Eagle back at about the seven-yard line. Someone is still down on the field. It strains too, as it's Jesse Small who had the sack before. Herschel Walker rarely oh, fumbles. Their regular punter underwent surgery, and he is uh, still on IR. So Fiegel's has the job. And we 
Daniel Lewis was back there, but it wasn't in the neighborhood. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. I mean, he would have gone if they were three and one, if, or four and one. If they're one and four or whatever, go ahead and go anyway. Uh, just don't get hurt. That's the key. Third and one. And Gannon on a scramble gets the first down the hard way as Herschel Walker makes the catch and gets to the Philly 38-yard line. His teammates down if he would have got hurt. The answer is certainly. The first down, Fenny makes the catch, and he's run out of bounds by Seth Joyner. He just does it in a very plodding, almost workmanlike fashion, but he does get it done. You just saw the numbers. Third and six. And the catch is made by Jordan for a first down. Steve Jordan to the 23-yard line. And More through the air. Jordan breaks a tackle, takes it down to the 9-yard line. Jerome Brown gets credit for the tackle down at the 9. Chris Carter in motion. Chris Carter makes the catch. And Chris Carter almost gets in again. He has stopped inside the 1. You asked Buddy Ryan about it. i tell you, he likes that young kid, wishes him well, but not against the Eagles. He said, I didn't feel he was the kind of player that could help us go to the Super Bowl, so they promptly went out and drafted four wide receivers with blazing speed, and three of them are still in the roster. But Carter fit into the two-back offense of the Vikings. Fenny, and he's in there for the touchdown. So Fenny gets it into the end zone, and the Eagles have squandered a 9-0 advantage as Minnesota takes the lead. Now, they lead by five. On second and 12, Cunningham throws on the run. The catch is made by Byers, and with some nifty hurdling, he takes it to the Minnesota 49-yard line where he's tackled by Joey Browner. Third and 12 from the 49-yard line. Cunningham going deep down the sideline, and it's knocked away at the 12-yard line. Again, it's Reggie Rutland. There, even if you'd hit him in stride. Jeff Spiegel is to kick it away. That's a good one. Not bad. Oh. <laughs> All right. William Frizzell, what a play. Stick up for one another. He had to be pleased with w William Frizzell's play on that last one. It pins Minnesota at its four, and then Gannon gets it away to Walker, and he fumbles again. And it's picked up by Harris at the 25 Eagles ball. Now. The officials on the field have hold the winner down by contact. And again, this will not be subject to review because when you're ruled down oh. by contact, there's the whistle, and the whistle blows. Not even close. No, nope. I mean, that is a fumble all the way, but this will fall under that category of the inadvertent whistle. Well, the whistle was not inadvertent. They ruled him down. The hit by Ben Smith. Right on the ball. The ball is clearly out of there. But and the whistle, if they're going to say, though, that he was ruled down by contact, the whistle blew, thus the play is over. And he can get done, and perhaps that could lead to the fumbles, and there's no question about it, even though it wasn't overturned, that was a fumble. On the 22, on second and seven, going deep for Chris Carter, and the former Eagle is out in front, and Chris Carter is having every dream come true. And when Buddy Ryan cut Chris Carter, he said the reason I'm doing it is he's only effective inside the 20-yard line. He doesn't have enough open field speed to make this ball club because Chris Carter just ran away from all of them. Isaiah Jenkins on the coverage out there, and he first of all, he slipped on a little quick move that Carter put him to the outside, and then... I think that's not bad speed. <laughs> Either that or <laughs> Buddy better get him a speedier cornerback for deep in their own territory that probably would have resulted in Philadelphia points. Off the fake to Tony. Cunningham is tripped up a little short of the first down to the 34-yard line he goes. Mark Deuce Bobbick gets credit for the tackle. It will be second and one. Brought down to 206. He gets it off on second and short and then gets dumped at the 24-yard line as Deuce Bobbick 
who made the last tackle after the game by Cunningham and Ken Clark come through and Deuce Baba gets the sack. And the Eagles lose it behind the Giants and you can pretty much write off a playoff possibility. Second and ten as the catch is made up at the 29 and a first down as Fred Barnett takes it out to the 35 yard line first down and this guy's a rookie but he had the sense to get out of bounds the future for this club and another guy Bellamy who's on injured reserve right. who Ryan likes best of all first down from the 38 yard line and Cunningham gets the first down tries to get out of bounds and does at the 45 yard line Darrell Fullington makes the tackle the clock is down to 34 seconds so final play of the half from the 49-yard line. Cunningham sends three receivers deep, throws up a Hail Mary, and it is dropped at the 10-yard line, Fred Barnett. And they are going to actually call it a catch, and the only place that matters is on the stat sheet. And there is a Philadelphia greeting for the Eagles as they head to the locker room. They're going to polish this up a little bit. Training camp revisited. Vikings by a dozen at the half. Back with halftime activities after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC team. There are the numbers for the first 30 minutes of play. Thing to keep in mind with Philadelphia, you see 189 yards of total offense, but I mean the penalties have just been the biggest thing with the Eagles. And as play resumes, it's third down and seven for the Eagles from the 13-yard line. Cunningham has to get to the 21 for the first down and does. He's, he gets to the 24-yard line before he's pushed out by Studwell. Uh, virtually useless to run the football. Second and nine off the fake. Cunningham lost it to Byers. To the 43-yard line and an eagle first down. Presumes it's second down and nine. Philadelphia from the 44. Henry Thomas is back in the game. Brim has replaced Rutland at the corner. And the catch is made, oh, and the yeah. flag goes down. Mike Quick makes the catch. And Good the flag. tackle by Fullington at the 40-yard line. Good flag there for Chris Dolman. Defensive pass in front, number 29. Only refused. First down. That's a sack all the way if Keith Byers doesn't step in. Second and 10. And this is Tony, who nearly had the ball come loose as he got started. Gets to the 33-yard line, and that's going to set up a third and four as Joey Browner comes up to make the stop. They barely got their people off the field. Third and four, safety blitz. They pick up Browner, and Cunningham with room to roll, exploits it, and takes it to the 20-yard line. The first man misses, and you've got man-for-man -man coverage. The defensive backs running with receivers and an open field for Randall Cunningham, who... Second and ten. Cunningham waiting for somebody to get open and throws underneath to the 14-yard line and Mike Quick makes the catch there. He is about three yards shy of the first down. It was ruled a, a reception by Keith Byers, but it was a good play by Mike Merriweather. He's having a fine evening. Third and two and a half. Cunningham was backing up as he throws to Quick incomplete. Quick is covered on the play by Carl Lee. We'll take a moment to rest on the turf, and it will bring up fourth down. One for one tonight, made a 38-yarder, and then had an extra point block, but that was really uh, a problem by Fiegels as he had difficulty handling the snap. And Ruzek swoops it through, but again, the Eagles bogged down inside the 20 after a drive that began at their 10. Cash in for three. Shaves the Viking lead to nine. Crowds will get weirder. <laughs> we'll, we'll be in for a couple of wild weeks as far as what we'll see in some of our crowds. And of course, I, we will now that you brought it up. Next week, we'll get to see the dog pound all dressed up. Mm -hmm. huh? Ruzek. Picks it to Walker. And Herschel can't handle it again. Philadelphia picks it up. Alaro. No, no touchdown. No, that's a no muff. touchdown. But Philadelphia ball. Yeah, if that's ruled a muff, 
which that was. Herschel Walker never had possession. You cannot advance a muff. He never did control it, so even though he was moving while he's bobbling it, it was ruled a muff, and for Herschel, he's having the kind of night that would give you nightmares. What a play by Reggie Rutland, though. He's been reading how he has not lived up to hopes, and he won't, and uh, all the problems that go with it, and he, you know, he just causes that kind of pressure that you just make the mistakes that you ordinarily wouldn't. Third and eight, pressure on. Cunningham banged down at the 12-yard line. Seven yards shy of the first down, and again, they're going to have to settle for a field goal. All-star effort there by Chris Bowman. No one on the Eagle offensive line seems to be able to handle it tonight. 29-yard attempt by Ruzek is good. Ruzek is really hurting. I mean, take a look at him holding his side. He's got bruised ribs, and the last two kicks have really put Ruzek in pain. Jones in motion. Walker stays in the block. Flag is down. Gannon throws into a passel of green shirts and has it intercepted by Wes Hopkins. But there are two flags down, one at the 30 and the other at the 50. Nonetheless, it was a good play by Wes Hopkins on a short ball. From the 44-yard line. And Goldman chased and is sacked at the 33-yard line by the guy who led the league last year and then finally picked up his first in the Vikings' last game, and Dolman picks one up here. Second and 21. Cunningham, and there's Dolman again. And that might not go down as a sack, but in effect, it's uh, about the same thing. I think will be one that uh, may decide who's in Pasadena in January 1. On first down, Chris Carter. You know, we've been talking about Carter and told you the story. Here comes everybody. Jones makes the catch, but he's thrown out of bounds at the 49 and doesn't have the first down. There, reading the blitz, getting rid of the ball effectively. He's 14 of 23 for 230. That worked. Newsom's kick. Fielded by Hargrove, fumbled by Hargrove, and the Vikings at the six-yard line have the football. That too, a muff, and it will be brought back a couple of yards, but it's the Vikings football. And Gannon gets sacked at the 14-yard line, and that's the second sack tonight for Jesse Small. He got mauled and mugged and dropped back to the 15-yard line. Jesse Small up. Gannon, a fade to Carter! Oh. And no, he does not have it. That's what he caught seven of for touchdowns last year with Philadelphia, and that one he perhaps should have had here for the Vikings. They were looking for possession, uh, not interference. Right. Does Carter have possession in the end zone? Boy, it is close. Oh, boy. You know, the, you have to come down with both feet in the end zone. But again, keep in mind it was ruled incomplete. Here's a field goal attempt now, and a key one by Donald Igwebuike, and that's good. 33-yard field goal. And it puts Minnesota up on top by nine. Trying to trap with their running all night long and not been successful at all. From the 23-yard line, well, it takes a, uh, a sack as well to yeah. do it. Thomas right. Struthers, 10-yard per reception average. That's, that's low for him. Third and nine from the 37. Gannon throws, open man, and a nice catch made by Hassan Jones, and out of bounds he goes at the 47 to keep this drive going with 12.44 remaining in the fourth quarter. Well, I guess didn't want to be off. Yep, and the reclusive owner at the moment as well. This is Chris Carter, and that trickery and deceit will not get him anywhere as Ben Smith breaks the play up at the 49-yard line. He doesn't have enough uh, speed in the open field, and... You know, I think he likes him personally. Uh, I agree. I mean, Chris Carter looks like he can still play this game. Gannon takes off with it. <laughs> he looked like he was going to slide and then realized, well, I got two more yards to go for the first down and dives for it. Third and seven. Here comes the blitz. 
And there goes Gannon. William Frizzell was the free man. They sent everybody. And yeah, there's nobody left to block. Time for 189. And what we don't have there is the rushing of Randall Cunningham. Second and nine, and Cunningham escapes the sack. And then gets taken down by Browner at the 14-yard line, short of a first down. It'll be third and two. For the Eagles there, Jackson comes back and hits Stolman in the back. Third and one, and they're not going to get that one. On a very big play here, Joey Browner comes up to make the stop. Lewis calls for the fair catch. It'll be Minnesota ball at the 40-yard line with 7.53 remaining. And then he gets on announcers for bringing it up. What yeah. are you supposed to do, ignore that yeah. stuff? No, sorry, Andre. That, that's, that, that, that doesn't count. Third and six. Ah. You're right, Dan. Well, we've seen it in every game we've done. Most of the tapes we've watched. Uh, I, I, I've seen too much of it from one guy. The kick by Newsom is inartistic and not real good as well. Down to the 21. Floyd, I think, is still playing. I mean, he was a fine defensive tackle in this league. There was. Piper yeah. Philadelphia, yeah. part of his career. Third and 10. Cunningham gets a block. What a shot. Ooh, and what? He gets to the 29, but he is short of the first down. Oh, that was Anthony Tony. What a shot. When play resumes. Here's this Bobby. Watch him go this way and watch him get hit by Anthony Tony. Just keep tracking 59. Keep tracking. Bang. Never saw it. Look at Cunningham, too. He was looking for the first down. He to go. They don't have much of a choice. They need two. And it's nearly picked off, but that's as good as an interception. And there's a flag down at the 36-yard line. It's Minnesota. It's the Vikings ball, and it's against Minnesota. So it's an eagle first down to the disbelief of Burns. They are not confident in their own running game. From the 34-yard line. Underneath it's Byers. He gets to the 41-yard line. Gain of about seven. Vikings up by nine, second down, three. That's a first down, Byers out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It's second and ten, coming here, fires, it's tipped, nearly intercepted, finally oh. caught by the Eagles. Unbelievable touchdown. <laughs> Fred Barnett. Could have been picked off right there. That's Brim. That's Michael Brim that hit the ball first. And the ball never hits the ground. Fullington knocked it up into the air. Barnett just hanging around watching and right into his hands. And Barnett, even though he's a rookie, didn't take him long how to figure out how to showboat on your way into the end zone. Oh, again, again, this is unbelievable. That should have been an easy interception on the part of Brim. And they'll bobble right into the hands. Yeah, Calvin Williams keeps the ball alive by turning it up into the air again. <laughs> For awkward games that I've seen in a long time. I mean, a franchise for the future. And in the pressure situation, that characteristic of the Eagles, they go for the football. That's Seven Buddy Ryan's ten. football. Look out. The Army in motion. They have not called it an incomplete pass. They're going to call that a fumble. Yep. They are. Seth Joyner came blitzing through. And bringing it back in the cocking motion. And that's good a good call. call. You'll see him lose it on the way back. He's trying to hurry the pass. He feels the pressure, feels the heat, knows he's about to get hit. And he loses it on the way back. Oh, that's. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles, who have gotten their share of big breaks here in the last couple of minutes, get another one. And the Vikings take a timeout. They had this one put away. First and goal at the six. 
Eight-man front. Touchdown, Tony. That might be the longest play from scrimmage other than Randall Cunningham tonight. Assessment for the kickoff. So the kickoff will come from the 40 rather than from the 35. Well, Minnesota needs a touchdown. It's a shotgun, even with this crowd noise. Hassan Jones for a gain of 14 to the 34-yard line. Intercepted. William Frizzell. Look at the head. Look how he's looking right, looking right, looking right, looking right. By that time, William Frizzell reads it all the way. Comes over, even though it's not his man. Steps in front and makes a play. Boy, this is Eagles football. Ugly but effective. Bide your time, bide your time. Get the turnover. And capitalize on it. Beautiful play, beautiful read by William Frizzell. Third and goal for the Eagles at the two-yard line. 156 remaining. Vikings have one timeout left. And they've got the field goal unit in here. After something like that, you have the other down to kick the field goal. Well, they're going to kick the field goal and try to salt it away, and that gives them an eight point lead. Ruzek from 19 moves it through. Why would you kick it on third down? You kick it on, you know, one of the reasons, Dan, if you fumble the ball, it's a bad snap to the man who's holding the ball. But what about he covers it? the ball, and then you, then you just have another, another down to but, kick it on. But that's the only plus. What about the time you could have used up by running a play on third down? Well, you you either either one the other. You either let a lot of clock expire or force them to use the timeout. Lead. Second and ten in the 22. Dump off to Rice. Double ugly, but the Eagles keep themselves alive. And for the Vikings, it's going to be a long, long mm -hmm. season. Third and five. And that's incomplete. And Hassan Jones takes a, a pop from Andre Waters. That I'm a, an intimidator. He said, I'll take them on, and I'll take them on if they don't like what I do. And he's made a couple of bad hits tonight. And on fourth and five, that pass is incomplete. It's amazing the way this game has turned around because it appeared that the Vikings were on their way to turning their season around and that there was going to be, well, a big problem here for Buddy Ryan. And hats off to Roger Ruzik and that man as well, Chris Carter, some night as he comes home. What a long flight back. Eagles pull it out. 32 to 24. If you go back to one key play in the game, and there were several, the holding call on Joey Browner on what would have been a change of possession on fourth and one for Philadelphia.